Hey everyone, this is Young. I am the instructor for software requirement engineering class, and I'm very excited to be here. Um, a little bit about myself. I just recently got my master in software engineer from Kennesaw State University. I also pursued my bachelor from Southern Poly, so I'm really not not anybody new to KSU campus. I've been working for about six years now. Um, so, throughout my professional careers, I run into a lot of software development projects where I started out as an intern and progressively to a senior developer and was also able to lead a couple of projects and hopefully I'll be able to share all of my experience with you for this class. Before we start going over what is software requirement engineering, I just one, you are to be aware that just because you are in software engineer, that doesn't mean you have to know how to program in or do any coding. Software development has a lot of different aspects to it. Programming is just one of the aspects that you can that you can pursue. Some other possibilities include project management, uh, business analyst, data analytic. Their, their, their opportunity is just endless. It's all dependent on what you want to do. For example, if you study software requirement and you really like it, you, you want to understand more about the business, how to be able to um, gather the need from the business and translate that into requirements where developer can then go and code them. That is project management because Besides getting the need from the business, you also have to be able to predict or project how long that need would take for the development team to implement it. When you're projecting it, it's not simple as asking the developer, hey, is this going to take you two or three days to finish this one request from the business? But, get, but rather, you have to look at it from a holistic point of view. Developers not only have to test it, they have to... Um, code it, they have to send it to design phase, code it, have QA, then deploy to production. Deploying to production also may mean that there are some systems or environments set up that they have to do and that may require some time as well. So being able to predict or estimate how long a task take takes some skills. Um, if you don't want to be project management, you don't want to deal with the business, you don't want to do any coding, then you can go into quality assurance. For quality assurance, uh, you, you, you still have to do coding, but, but it's not as extensive coding as, as a software developer would. You would basically need to know scripting so that you can validate the system that the developers are building. By validating, that literally means as a QA, your, primar your primary job is to get the requirement, do mostly black box testing, making sure that whatever the business want the system to behave, the system actually behave that way. If you don't want to be QA, then you can also be data analyst. For data analyst, you still need to do a lot of requirements gathering because a lot of time, what you would do is you would uh, gather the results produced by the software systems that the developer have built and you would run them through a set of algorithm or analytic tasks to predict trend like if if a sales forecasting system is predicting that I would need a lot more um, water heater in the winter then you need to look at the results of that system and be able to analyze exactly how many water heater the company need to make to be able to provide the needs of the actual customers when it comes to the winter weather. So that's the opportunity or endless that you don't really have to be a programmer for that. If you have any question about what else you could pursue with a degree in software engineering, feel free to reach out to me. But one of the career paths that I have taken after HP 
after spending a couple of years at HP was that Home Depot reached out to me for a potential uh, business analyst position. I, I, I was straight up an IT guy. I didn't understand anything about supply chain or how to run a business. So I, I, I joined them and I was able to completely understand exactly what the business needs and how to improve and optimize the process. That process took a lot of learning. Mostly you have to understand how the business works before you can do any kind of analysis work on that. But that's just an example that you don't really have you don't really have to be a programmer for software engineering. Now back back to the PowerPoint. What is requirement engineering? You can read I'm not gonna go through every single slice here, I'm just gonna spend time on a couple of slides. Software intensive system. Software on its own is useless. In my opinion this is completely true. You don't just design a software system that is not going to be used by anybody. Software system need to be design, designed with a purpose in mind. What is the problem that the system is supposed to solve? Now, through, regardless if your software system has a user interface or not, if it has a user interface, chances are it's going to be used by the actual user almost on a day-to-day -day basis. But even for the system without user interface, they still being used by users. For example, if you responsible for creating a system that all it does is creating purchase order, meaning a purchase order is when one company decides, decides to place an order for a specific item that is produced by another company that entire process can be automated and a lot of time you're not gonna have a UI system to trigger the purchase of that order especially in a supply chain network where you already have a forecasting system that predicts exactly how many of an item you would need and automatically cut a purchase order to the actual vendor that produced it for example at Home Depot we have a forecasting system that will basically tell us how many water heater we need for the next 28 days or the next few weeks. We would then have another system that automatically cut the purchase order. No, there is none user interaction with the system. There, everything, the entire supply chain is automated. And even though the user doesn't really interact with the system. The user still look at the result produced by the system, especially all the purchase order that the system created, so that they can perform analysis work on that. That is an example that the system doesn't need to have any UI component in it for the user to use. Quality eco fitness for a purpose. Quality is very important company doesn't just spend millions and millions of dollars on a system that they're not going to use and because of that a lot of company actually will hire an entire team of software quality assurance just to test on the quality of the product that you are building now in currently in, in the market there are companies try that's try to shift more toward a DevOps model what DevOps mean is that instead of have separation of concern, meaning a software developer group should only be focusing on writing software, whereas quality assurance group will only be responsible for testing their product. They trying to make the software developers do both of those things, as in the software developers should know exactly what is it that he code for. And because of that, he should be he or she should be able to test the um, to test the code that he or she just created, making sure the system actually perform and behave as it's supposed to. That is what DevOps model mean. In a lot of time before you start to design any software, you need to know that a lot of them are used for human activities. Just like I said earlier. The software system sometimes 
doesn't have any user interface component to it. However, just because everything is automated doesn't mean that users doesn't use the system. The challenge is application domain and machine domain. In my opinion, think of application domain as the researches that you have to do or the external um, context of the application. Application domain is really what's going to is the main driver for requirement specification. If you are going to build a house and think of a house as your software system, you don't just blindly look for an empty lot and build a house on. You have to think of whether or not that lot actually can have basement, whether or not the drainage system is going to be in the backyard where the, the, the backyard hill is going to go down or whether it's going to be through the front yard where you will have a sort of hilly front yard. Those are the domain properties that you have to think about. In my note, I basically say that domain is always referred to application domain which is the properties that we drive how the requirements are written. Machine domain would then be the actual behavior of the system. If if we are going to the ATM for example, then the application domain of the ATM or the environment the environmental context that you have to think about is how is the user going to interact with the system? Where are the interaction gonna happen? And whenever you want to use an ATM, right, the location is very important. It has to be located as a safe area, like usually outside of the bank. And user can go there after banking hours so they can either deposit money or withdraw money. Those are application domain. Basically thinking about how the system is going to be used. From your understanding of how the system is going to be used, you can then specify the actual requirements so that your machine domain will simply be the behavior of the system. As in, the system shall still function after 4 p.m. where there are no bankers on site, right? Because everything is supposed to be working when the user goes to the ATM. They don't need any assistance. They would just be able to simply insert their debit card into the ATM and withdraw money or deposit money into it. These are just complexity problems. You can read about them. Um, message me or post in the discussion context if you have any question on these. Designing for people. All right. I really want to stress that all software application is designed with a purpose. The purpose of the software is what you have to know by heart so that you can go out, do your research, come up with the requirements. Depending on the purpose, for example, if the purpose of the traffic light system is to be able to um, accurately change the light from green to red to yellow depending on the flow of traffic then you have to do a lot of research such as how busy does that section of the road get depending on the hours of the day um, how, what is their weight limits whenever you can feel a certain weight on the road and you also need some sort of monitoring to, to know exactly to basically track the heat map of all the car right those are, again, the purpose of the system. The purpose of this traffic light is to accurately change the light to prevent a traffic jam from happening. How rational is the design process? Hard system view. The major thing that you should remember about hard system view is that the correct program is one that satisfies all the specification in the hard system view. This, nowadays, whenever people say hard system, in my opinion, 
they really mean the traditional waterfall approach to software development. We're gonna spend some time talk about waterfall approach, but basically what that means is before you design any system, waterfall methodology requires you to have all the requirements already specified. That means you don't just develop a system then two weeks after having the business user come and tell you that hey I just changed the requirement so you have to re-implement it. That's, that is not allowed for hard system. For soft system, soft system are more for evolutionary system where requirement can change on a day-to-day -day basis. In, in modern software development world, almost all the system you develop are going to be soft system view. What that means is that because all company are adapt, well, I'm sorry, not all, but the majority of software company are adapting to the agile, um, agile methodology, which mean the business user will give you the problem that they want to solve, and they give you some time in between two to four weeks so that you can have your sprint period. A sprint period is when the entire team of software developers will get together trying to solve their um, request that the business user just gave them. The most important thing in here that you should remember is that software development is embedded in a complex organizational context. That means that the system is used by multiple departments in a company. Um, going back to the purchase order system that I was saying, even though it is simply the purpose of the the purpose of the system is simply to create purchase order for one company against other company. However, different departments within that company actually interact either directly or indirectly with the system. The people that interact directly with the system is probably going to be the finance people since they have to track how money are being spent, um, whether or not their whatever purchase we made are actually sold in the store, the customer actually want them. Another team that interact with the result of the purchase order is probably the data analytic team. They have to look at all the all the items that are on that order and try to predict trend, right? Trying to predict whether or not that item will still be in demand four months or six months from now so that they can work with finance to plan out how to plan out the budget in order to continuously purchasing that one particular item. So when customers go to the store they have those items available in the store for them. Throughout all of these which system are soft Control system are usually hard system. Aircraft flight control, anything that is missing critical or that have to do with a human life are usually hard system. For example, for aircraft flight control, you don't just you don't get to change the requirement every two weeks. You have to know exactly what it is that you're building because a lot of it are just physical processes that can be automated. If you continuously going back and forth changing the requirements as you are developing the system, then then there's no way the user will ever receive the system and being used in the actual aircraft. Furthermore, aircraft flight control are usually regulated by the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, and they have a clear set of requirements that all companies need to follow information system, office automation, groupware, web services, business support, those are the system that are soft system because those systems require human activities interaction on a day to day basis. Both the interaction between the user and the system is what going to drive the next feature of the system. For office automation, if um, say for example the light, the lights, all the lights in the office would turn on by six, by eight a.m. and turn off by five p.m. 
if the user go there if the user go there and somehow have to work ex um, extensively for holiday period over time then we should be able to change the system to automatically being able to detect whether or not holiday period are coming so that it, it can extend the life of all the lights in the office instead of turning on from 8 to 5 now I probably turn on from 8 to 7 and probably the system should be also be able to set down all the lights during holiday period because nobody will be there definition of requirement engineering requirements engineering is a set of activities concerned with identifying and communicating the purpose of a software intensive system and the context in which it will be used hence requirement engineering acts as the bridge between the real world needs of users customers and other constituencies affected by a software system and the capabilities and opportunities afforded by software intensive technologies i think this definition is accurate but it's kind of long if if you ask me what requirement engineering is then in my opinion my definition for it would be requirement engineering is the ability to translate and elaborate on business users needs into unambiguous actionable and verifiable requirements the reason why I say it has to be verifiable and actionable is because obviously we have to go and develop a system from the users need so they have to be actionable as far as verifiable whatever we develop right we have to be able to tell the users that we develop the correct system and that's why requirement have to be verifiable otherwise how does the user know we have developed the correct systems the cost of getting it wrong in almost all software project failures is because the right requirements were not developed or software developers did not carefully think before they code they may read a requirement and directly jump to the coding without ever spending time to carefully question the requirement on whether or not that requirement is actually um, implementable that requirement is actually feasible business users in most cases do not know what they want and if you don't spend the time to analyze your requirement to really understand it to really know what is it that you're supposed to develop chances are you're going to develop the wrong system wrong system mean it's going to have bugs or defects that the user did not want in the first place user may ask the system to do XYZ but the system is now doing AOP for example um, also even for in, in the perfect world where the requirements are perfectly correct software developers will still somehow may introduce bugs in the code and that's why we have to constantly test or verify that this correct system was built by perform extensive testing on the system when we perform testing on the system we have to compare the results that the system produce against the requirements that we get in because once you starting to sell a system to the market or once you start to advertise it and you have users for it if the users find bugs or defect with the system then it's going to affect your company reputation and the company may have to send out letters or gifts just to make the user feel better and that costs a lot of time and that's why you want to always perform system verification and validation to make sure the correct system was built and the system behaves correctly this is the requirement analyst that I was talking to you about this is very similar to business analyst in the case where you would understand how the business work being able to translate the business need into actionable and verifiable requirement statement statements for their developers to code um, for a career path you usually would start from requirement analyst or business analyst into project management and that would be the regular career path 
for a requirement analyst. But requirement analyst major responsibility would be identify which problem need to be solved. Exactly where is the problem, right? Whose problem is it? Which stakeholders? Who is the one requesting it? Why do we need to solve it? Because if if we don't really need to solve it, why waste time and resources developing this system whereas we can better spend those time and resources into other growth opportunities within the company? How might software system help? When does it need solving? What might prevent us from solving it? All of those are standard questions that you should ask as a requirement analyst. And this is the summary that you just that you could read. Overall, I feel like the toughest part in requirement engineering is to be able to understand what it is that the users really want. A lot of time, the the user may have an idea or a problem. They usually would come to you with a problem, and they might ask you to solve it. And because they come to you with a problem, you have to do all your research think about the problem, identify actionable plans with, with specific and detailed step of how you're going to solve the problem. From that plan, you have to turn every single step into written requirements and have the user read over those requirements and agree with you before you jump into development. If the user doesn't agree with you, then after you already spent all the time to develop that system, the user can simply say he didn't ask for it, that's not what he meant, then what are you going to do, right? Right? There's, there's nothing you can do besides just starting from square one where you have to again go back and ask the user what is it that he or she really wants. So just make sure before you start on any software development project, understand the need of the user, what it is that he or she really wants and being able to elaborate from that need or want into actionable requirement statements and have the business user review those requirement statements, agree with you, sign off on those requirements before you move on to the next phase of software development which is um, requirement review where you review the feasibility of the requirement and then design the system before you code it. Thank you.